and welcome to another um, tutorial on Wallacy tips and trick um, in this actually video I'm going to talk about the newest Wallacy update 2.7 in which we added a new subcategory of genomic analysis um, this subcategory is actually uh, one of our favorite um, categories within Wallacy plugin and we will add more uh, workflows and algorithm and components in this subcategory in future but for now we have two new components in Wallacy genomic analysis subcategory which are genomic sequencing and genomic visualization which in short um, will give users uh, and provide ability to deep dive into the genetics mechanisms behind their evolutionary simulations. Uh, it will equip them with the power to decode their architectural genome if this is a workflow and technique that uh, is being used to solve architectural problem. This update uh, will basically give you guys a stronger data sets, enhanced analysis, and improved understanding of uh, what this evolutionary simulation outputs and allow you for uh, detecting any emergent patterns and behaviors uh, within the context of the genomes and chromosomes of your design problem that otherwise it will go unnoticed. This is a very important um, piece of information that will help everyone using this technique to better reformulate and uh, solve their problem at hand. All right, let's, uh, let's just uh, dive right into this. The main input of these two components are the um, Wolsey genomes. This is the example file that has 5,000 individuals. I'm going to actually select a few of the individuals from very simply through tree statistics and iteming through the paths and then get the tree branches. So right now I have 21 solutions selected, their genomes, um, and I decode the genome. The first component uh, that needs to be actually uh, used is genomic sequencing. Uh, it has two inputs, uh, two mandatory inputs. One of them is decoded genomes. I'm going to connect, and the other one is a button, a button that basically initiate the um, the the process. When we click this button, there will be a few new components uh, generated on Canvas based on the information provided to the component and from within the design problem, the way which we define the problem, we categorize the DNA into the chromosomes, and the way we basically create our design problem. As you can see, these are uh, this component went on Canvas and um, perform some analysis uh, on the design problem and get the genomes, decoded genomes and categorize them according to the chromosome information created um, the same number of the gradients which within which we can actually change the colors and color code our chromosomes and uh, connect them through, uh, package them through a data tree um, through the component of entwine and get them ready basically to be connected to the next component. The next component is genomic visualization uh, which only has two mandatory inputs of uh, walls genomes, decoded genomes and the gradient color. So I'm going to connect the gradient color here and I'm going to connect the, uh, the same genome that I have connected here to there and there you go we've got our um, genomes visualized based on the chromosomes and now these colors are corresponding to basically our chromosomes and with each of these gradients are also named based on the chromosomes um, name double underscore one double underscore two so now i'm going to change the colors 
to uh, better visualize my chromosome. Let me actually do this. This go brown and this go three colors. All right. So now this is uh, our uh, genomic sequencing. Um, now if I go back, I can actually change the start or the end of this and by toggling through this uh, we can see the uh, the way which chromosomes uh, are actually converging towards a particular pattern we can understand uh, what dna's and the genes are being selected more frequently as we move on towards the uh, simulation this is super interesting that this particular one which if i remember was one of the sizes of the courtyard in the example file has been converged to only uh, number one but when we go back it shows that the simulation was exploring uh, more values but towards the end it converged towards a particular um, numerical value there, there are a lot of information actually that uh, one can extract and derive from this uh, from understanding the uh, the patterns emerged from using this in other workflows such as uh, supervised learning machine learning such as uh, predictive algorithms um, it can also be helpful to better formulate the design problem uh, based on the understanding of the number of repetition and the significance of each value within the population and it requires basically a 10 episodes video series to dive deep into this analysis and um, utilize the information to better like um, help us to solve our design problem but it is outside of the context of this like introductory video um a few other inputs here are basically the size of the text um, the size of the these texts that represents the dna the uh, the grid x and y sizes which basically uh we can change the the size um uh, of our um, visualization here based on the an input and also the size of the uh, the arrows here uh, length and heights um, I hope that this um, uh, video is useful for those of you who are interested in using these two new components we are super excited about them and um, there will be a paper coming out soon from our side that explores and um, dives deep into this um, and understand and explain its significance and um, solving a design problem. As soon as it comes out, we'll share it in our social media and relevant outlets. We are super excited to see what you guys are going to do with this uh, new set of information and analysis and how you utilize this in order to better formulate your design problem and better solve um, and optimize your um, architectural or urban problems. I hope you guys enjoyed it and see you in the next one. Bye.